All right, so now section 7.3 is about trigonometric substitution. So for integrals that contain the one of the expressions, square root of a squared minus x squared, square root of a squared plus x squared, or square root of x squared minus a squared, where a is greater than zero, we use trig substitution. Also in this section we will use what we learned in, in basic algebra, college algebra, intermediate algebra, completing the square to transform a trinomial like this into one of these. Uh, so the basic idea when we have an integral containing these, we want to get rid of the square root. Okay, we want to get rid of the square root. For example, if you have square root a square minus x square, we use the substitution x equals a sine theta and theta has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. We have to have the restriction. You will see why in a second, okay? So this means that sine theta is x over a. And if you put that in a triangle, theta opposite hypotenuse, this guy is going to be using the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared minus x squared equals b squared. So b is square root of a squared minus x squared. And you can see this is the same as said. So now, when we have, so when we have square root of a squared minus x squared, we get square root of a squared minus x is a sine theta, a squared sine squared theta, which is square root of a squared into one minus sine squared. And you can see how it's going to come out to a absolute value of cosine theta, but because theta is in the first or fourth quadrant, negative pi over 2, so this is going to be a cosine theta. Sine theta is positive if we're talking here, okay? So two reasons why we restrict this. First, you can get rid of the absolute value, and second, since x equals a sine theta, and if we want to if we want to solve for theta, theta is sine inverse of x over a, and that's why we need to restrict the domain of sine because because we need to, we need to get the inverse. Okay, and if you recall trig, we can only get an inverse function if we restrict the, the function to be a one to one function. Okay, now, so which trick substitution do we use? Remember, there's three cases. For each one, we're going to use a diff. For this, obviously, we use x equals a sine theta. Here's the summary on page 25 in your notes. If you have square root of, you can see what we did, and then you can see how it came out. So if you have a squared plus x squared, then we use x equals a t tangent theta. Again, this is the same as sine inverse, except it doesn't include the endpoints. And you end up with a squared plus a squared tangent square, a squared into 1 plus tangent square, which is a squared secant square. And if it's x squared minus a squared, you use a secant, and this is the domain for secant. Uh, it's either in the first or in the third quadrant, depending on whether a x is greater or equal to a or less or equal to negative a, and you get a squared secant squared minus a squared, which is a squared times secant squared minus one, which is a squared times squared. So this is the, this is your math. Okay? This is what you're gonna use to figure it out. So let's do a few examples to demo all this. How do we evaluate integral of dx over x squared square root of 4 minus x squared? So if you look at the, the map, it's square root of a squared minus x squared. 
this is your a squared minus x squared, so a is 2, so x equals 2 sine theta. And keep in mind that theta in this case is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So that means dx is 2 cosine that d theta. Now we're going to transform this into integral with theta. So integral of dx is 2 cosine theta d theta. This would be x squared, which is 4 sine squared theta, square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta, which is 4 into 1 minus sine squared, which is 4 cosine squared, which is 4 cosine theta, 2 cosine theta. So that, we cancel that out, and you get an integral of 1 over 4, 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared theta, which is 1 over cotangent, negative cotangent, plus C. Now remember the triangle we did earlier. If sine theta is x over 2, opposite over hypotenuse, this is square root of 4 minus x squared. So cotangent theta is going to be uh, opposite over adjacent, so it's negative 1 over 4 opposite or adjacent over opposite adjacent over opposite plus c so it's negative square root 4 minus x squared over 4x plus c cotangent theta Cotangent theta, tangent is opposite of over adjacent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So this is going to be x and it's going to be 4x. It's wrong in the notes. Let's fix it. Okay, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Yeah. So this should be x. Please fix it in the notes. And this should be 4x. Okay. In the notes, page 26. All right. Example 2. How do we evaluate integral of dx over square root of x squared plus a squared? So if you look at the map that I told you about, x equals a tan theta, where theta has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So dx is a secant squared theta d theta. So this would be dx which is a secant squared theta theta and that guy is going to be x squared plus a squared which is a squared tangent squared plus a squared which is a squared tangent squared plus 1 which is a squared secant squared theta so square rooted you get a secant theta that guy with that guy so integral of secant theta d theta, and we know we've done this before, ln of absolute value of secant plus tangent plus c. Now remember, we integrate, we're integrating with respect to x, so we got to go back to x. Well, if secant theta, if tangent theta is x over a, the opposite over adjacent using the Pythagorean theorem you get x squared plus a squared so we want secant you know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse secant is reciprocal hypotenuse over adjacent so square root of x squared plus a squared over a tangent opposite of adjacent plus c okay example three How do we evaluate the integral of square?
square root of x squared minus 25 over x dx. Again, if you look at this, this tells you you're going to do secant again, right? x squared minus a squared. So x, no, I'm, I'm sorry, secant. We haven't done secant yet. So x equals 5 secant theta. So dx equals 5. Derivative of secant is secant tangent. So if you look at this guy, x squared minus 25, you would have 25 secant squared minus 25, which is 25 times secant squared minus 1, 25 tangent squared, and if you square root it, you get 5 tangent. So we're going to get 5 tangent theta over x, which is 5 secant theta, and then dx is 5 secant theta tangent theta d theta. So this guy cancels this guy out, the 5's cancel out, and you get an integral of 5 tangent square, which is, as we learned from the previous section, tangent square is secant square minus 1, which would be integral of secant square minus integral of d theta, that's tangent, and that's theta. And now we're going to change that again, since secant is x over 5. So cosine is the reciprocal of secant, 5 over x. So we do our triangle, adjacent hypotenuse. So this would be square root of x squared minus 25 using the Pythagorean theorem. So now we need two things. We need tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So 5 ta opposite over adjacent. And then we need theta. Theta is secant inverse of x over 5. Let's see. So that is the answer. Example 4. Now they're not giving us an integral, so we have to come up with that. It says show that the area of the semicircle centered at 0, 0 and of radius A. is pi a squared over 2. So if we have half a circle, semicircle, has radius a, so it's negative a, a, a. So remember, the, the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So y squared equals a squared minus x squared, plus or minus, but we only have the positive. So this is the graph, this is the equation, square root of a squared minus x squared. And we want the area, so the area is the integral from negative a to a of this function dx, which we can, for simplicity, make it 2, 0 to a, because it's an even function. Okay, so looking to integrate this, that's this fender, Trig, trig substitution where x equals a sine theta. Theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So dx equals a cosine theta d theta. So let's simplify this. So it's a squared minus x squared is a squared minus a squared sine squared which is a squared cosine squared. When we square root it, we get a cosine theta. So the area is going to be 2. Forget the limits now because we have theta squared. a cosine theta. And dx is a cosine theta d theta. a squared, so 2 a squared integral of cosine. And to do cosine squared, this is cos squared, it's one half, one plus cosine two theta, 
In the paper, we have angle formula. So it's a square integral of 1 d theta plus a square integral of cosine 2 theta d theta. So it's a square then theta plus 1 half sine 2 theta. So if we want to put the limits when x is 0, when x is 0, a is, I mean theta is 0, x is uh, a, theta is pi over 2, so we get a squared pi over 2 plus 0 minus a squared times 0, so pi a squared over 2, which is exactly, sorry, which is exactly what we, what we have for the half area of half a second. Example 5. How do we evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 square root of x squared plus 1 dx? Again, this fits under x equal 8 and theta, where a is 1, so 1 tangent theta. So dx is secant squared theta d theta. So x squared plus 1 is tangent squared plus 1, which is secant squared. If you square root it, you get secant theta. And so we're going to get integral of secant theta, and then dx is secant squared d theta. So this is integral of secant cubed, which if you look at in the previous section, we're going to do integration by part. We're going to let u equals this guy, dv. So we're going to get u times v minus integral of v du. So if u is secant, then du is secant theta tangent theta d theta. If dv is secant squared theta d theta, then v is the integral of secant squared, which is tangent theta. Okay, so then we would have u, which is secant theta, times v, which is tangent, minus integral of v du, which is secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. So this guy is tangent square, and tangent square, this, this guy is tangent square, which is secant square minus 1 times secant theta d theta, which is secant cubed, if we distribute, minus secant theta. There's a reason why I want to do this. So now I have, I have this guy, which is integral of secant cubed theta d theta, equals secant theta tangent theta, minus integral of secant cubed theta d theta, and then minus negative is plus integral of secant theta d theta. So I'm going to move this over here because it's the same as that. So 2 integral of secant cubed theta d theta equals secant theta tangent theta. Integral of secant is ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So the integral of secant cubed theta d theta is 1 half on this guy. So go back to our integral, integral of 0 to 1 square root of x squared plus 1 dx equals 1 half of this guy plus ln absolute value of secant plus tangent. Now if x is between 0 and 1, theta is between 0 and pi over 4, you check that and you end up with half root 2 plus ln of 1 plus root should be able to figure this out. Alright, so the last problem that I want to do from this section is the 6. Integral of 1 over x squared plus 3 to the 3 halves. Well, if you see, we can, so let's write it so it fits what we're looking at. This is square root of x squared plus 3 cubed. 
which fits. So this is like x squared plus root 3 squared cubed. So let x equals a, which is root 3 tangent theta. So dx is root 3 secant squared theta. And uh, on the side, x squared plus root 3 squared is going to be uh, root 3 tangent theta squared plus 3, which is 3 tangent squared plus 3, which is 3 secant squared, when you square root it. You're going to get square root of 3 secant theta. So this would be an L of 1 over square root of 3 secant theta cubed. dx is root 3 tangent theta d theta so we have root 3 tangent theta d theta that's root 3 cube secant cube theta well root 3 this is root 3 times 3, which is one third on the outside, tangent over secant cube. Tangent over secant cube. So tangent is sine over cosine. And secant cube at the bottom is cosine cube on top. So you have cosine square. That cancels out. Um, oh, I messed up. This should be root 3 secant squared d theta. Should be secant squared. Okay. Dx, sorry. Dx, it froze a little bit. So dx is root 3 secant squared. Okay. So what we're going to put here, root 3 secant squared, please fix that. So that's going to be, instead of, uh, so secant squared is going to cancel, so we get secant, which is actually 1 over secant, which is cosine theta, that's a lot easier. So it's 1 third sine theta plus c, and if we go back to the triangle, we let, we let x equal root 3 tangent, so tangent theta is x opposite over adjacent, so this would be root x squared plus 3, so sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse plus c. Alright, so that ends 7.3. Three.